It's like, do you, you either eat the apple or you're not getting laid? You see this? Shakes her ass a little bit, boobs around, presses her freaking buttocks, and, and is, you know, up against him. He goes, all right, all right, all right I'll eat the fucking User apple. I'll eat the fucking from apple. Your channel. She eats the apple. Next thing you know, <laughs> fucking thunder and lightning bolts come out. The serpent fucking shoots out everywhere. There's fucking snakes all over the place. People whisper in your ears. And God, when the thunder's voice comes down, what have you done? You are banished <laughs> from Eden. Get out! <laughs> they fall. All because of the bitch wanted a little fucking taste of the apple. Next thing you know, there's fucking world wars, there's famine, there's starvation. Out of the knee of her fucking erect, the hair's falling out. <laughs> She's fat as hell. She's had like seven fucking kids. He's a fucking mess. His teeth are falling out, right? And then God turns to him and says, I need you to live to 150, okay? <laughs> God, 150? I'm dying now. No, no, no. I need you to live to 150. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to wipe out your entire family. You need to start another family. Holy fucking shit! And I want you to sire all these fucking people, and you're gonna, they're all gonna have sex with each other. And by the way, they all are members of the same family now. Okay, that's <laughs> fucked up, okay? Oh my god. <laughs> Good fucking god. And every time, every time, God, you know, man gets going a little bit, right? He gets going a little bit. Next thing you know, <clears throat> knock, knock, knock. Hello, this is Noah. Can I help you? It's God. Uh, yeah. I'd like to speak with you for a minute. Okay, what's going on, God? Uh, there's gonna be, like, a flood for, like, 40 fucking days and 40 fucking nights, and I need you to scour the earth for two of every fucking thing and put them all on this big boat called an ark. <laughs> okay, but God, I'm, like, a little busy right now. I got all this shit on my plate. I'm trying to feed my family and everything. It's really rough over here. He goes, yeah, I know. It's, it's rough in a lot of places. So I'm gonna end the world in, like, like two weeks. So you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> but a fucking guy has got to go out, scour the end of the earth, make this fucking huge fucking ark, shove all this shit on there, and next thing you know, he's, it starts raining and fucking lightning and flooding and the water rises up. The man, everybody on the boat is fucking seasick. They're all fucking shitting and hurling diarrhea all over the fucking place. He's trying to feed them, right? His wife's bitching, his kids are fucking screaming. 30 days, 40 fucking nights of rain, fucking water torture. They have no way they're going, whether they're going to fucking survive. It fucking stinks to high heaven. And then they slam into a fucking rock. And everything stops. Finally, lets everybody out of the fucking boat. He thinks, all right, I'm good to go. Oh. No, I, I got to do me a favor. What? I need to live to like 150 years. What's with the 150 fucking year thing? Haven't I done enough time? Yeah, you're not done. Enough <laughs> for you to do. <laughs> oh, and by the way, um, your daughters and everything. Okay, there's not a lot of people left on the earth now because like you guys are like the only ones. I need you to fuck your fucking kids and shit. God, really? That's fucked up, man. Really? Come on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it's the incest thing. This whole thing with the incest, I don't get it. There's a lot of incest in the Bible. I don't understand it. Maybe it's why we finally stopped it. I don't know. Every time. Every time. <laughs> hey, Lot. Yeah, it's God. Yeah? Yeah, you live in a really bad area. Yeah, I know that. I'm poor. Lots of people live in bad. Yeah, but your area is really bad. I'm going to send some angels to come and get you out. Oh, God, thanks a lot. Yeah, but there's one thing, though. Oh, what's with this? There's always, there's always a catch, God. There's one thing. Um, you just, whatever you do while you're leaving, do not look back. And I need you to get out, and I need you to give safe haven to these angels, and they're going to take you out. Well, the angels show up at the door. They knock on the door. Everybody from the town wants to, they want to fuck Lot. They want to fuck the angels. They want to fuck Lot's daughters. They, you know, they're really, it's getting bad. So they run out. Next thing you know, they're... <clears throat> fucking fire, brimstone everywhere, and all this shit's getting wiped out, people are screaming, there's agony, <clears throat> gnashing of teeth, and of course his wife turns around and she gets turned to a pillow of salt. Well, that's fine, but right now he didn't need that much salt. That's a lot of salt to carry, and so he leaves his wife. His wife is fucking gone. Lot's like fucking 80 years old. Wait, wait, what about salt? Salt, is, you know, Lot's wife got turned to a pillow of salt. She fucking broke the rule. Rule was don't fucking turn around. Don't fucking look back. The fucking women always have to fucking break the rules. So his wife looks back, so she gets turned to a fucking pillar of salt. Now Lot's got no fucking wife. He's got these kids. He's running for his fucking life. Finally, he settles down. They take a fucking break. And they're like, knock, knock, knock. Lot, 
Yeah. It's gone again. Yeah. How'd you make out? Well, my wife's dead. Okay. And I got nothing here but my daughter's. Yeah, i would be meaning to talk about that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> listen, there's not a lot of people around. Again, I kind of like wiped everybody out. I need you to sleep with your two daughters. Again, with the incest. Holy Jesus. I keep reading your Bible and there's a lot. You got to sleep with your fucking kids. And you need to make more babies. And uh, I need you to live to like 150. <laughs> how old? How old was was he? Like in the end, do you think? So what does he do? Well, they get good and lick it up. They have a big freaking party. Next thing you know, out pops a bunch of kids. Well, one of these kids actually winds up ruling the fucking better part of their own world. Solomon. Wow, he's an amazing man. Does so much. And also, he fucks up a lot too. So the Bible's full of this fucking shit, man. I mean, it's just it's it's sort of this sort of dance between you know. You're fucking up, and I'm going to wipe everything out. The part I really don't get, though, is the whole revelations part. Is the part where, this is the really fucked up part. The part where God actually lets the devil totally come back with somebody that he's created from a jackal, okay? Which, when was the last time you went to the zoo and saw a jackal, Okay. So I don't even know what a jackal is, but I'm not sure what it is. But it's some it's kind like, of it's like it's like a it's like a dog. It's, it's like kinda. a dog. Basically, it's like this grits, this rancid dog. It's kind of like a dingo. Maybe they got the <clears> words <throat> mixed up. Maybe this all takes place in fucking Australia. And it's actually a dingo. I don't know. Because dingoes are pretty nasty. Are they? Yeah. 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 They're not the most pleasant of dogs. It's like a wild dog. Well, most dogs in the wild are wild and. Yeah, they're not very nice. <clears throat> so it gets to do, they get to do the whole thing all over again, except this time it makes Hitler look like, you know, like a play toy. This guy, the Antichrist, all right, is going to totally wipe everything out, and then they're going to do this one big battle, and they're going to decide who, who gets to stay and who gets to go, after they wipe out just about everything on the fucking planet. Well, that's what happens. What can you do? Nothing much. Nothing. So my advice is start going to church and start talking to God a little bit more <clears throat> and ask him for a little fucking help because either you're on his good side or you're on his bad side. And I really don't suggest you get on his bad side. But half the time, it doesn't even matter, does it? It does. I don't know. It does. I've had some good experiences, and then mostly bad. Well, that's pretty much, you know, your, the term comes your lot in life, right? So that's where that term kind of comes from. It's your, you got thrown out, you know. You're, you can thank your ancestors for getting you kicked out. And, uh, you know, even the most wealthy with the best lives in the world, a lot of that is luck. And uh, and if it's still at the end, at the end, who knows what happens at the end? Maybe you go to heaven, maybe you go to hell. But uh, you know, I like to think, well, I you know, I fear there ain't no heaven, but I pray there ain't no hell, you know, because I really wouldn't want to wind. If this is hell, well, that's bad. But if there's something worse than this, that's really bad. That's what, that's what free choice does. Half the time, I suppose. Or, well, most of the time. Well, you don't, you're, not living <clears throat> in, you're not living in the Garden of Eden anymore, so it's all basically downhill from there. So you try to find little bits of heaven and hell here on this planet. Do you have any more Bible stories, Arch? Oh, God, I got tons of them. Let's hear another one. No, oh, I think I'm pooped out. That was a lot. You sure? Yeah, that was exhausting. Good, though. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's one of my rats. It's kind of funny. It's kind of true. It's so fucking well. I think one of my favorite books, read Leviticus. It's like an S&M manual. Really? 
It is. It's really bad. Well, I mean, you think about what's going on today in the Middle East, and you hear all these stories about how they treat people, they treat each other, and, you know, like necklacing, where they throw a fucking tire around some chick's neck, and they set her on fire, and they shove her out into the street. What? What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to watch the news more often. This is what they do. They they totally abuse each other there. They have no respect for life. And they definitely don't have any respect for women. You know, women are treated as junk. And kids, too. And if you break any one of their silly, crazy laws, right, this is what they do to you. They'll torture your ass. You know, but, but not they're not the only ones. They're just the, the most recent ones. But some of these laws go back way, way back. So... These are the kinds of atrocities that they commit, and it's very hard to stop them. You know, I mean, all over the world, like there's places where, you know, it's not just men are castrated; it's women are are basically cast. It's not castration; it's uh, they cut off pieces of their vagina so that they are not. Um, it's like a punishment, so they're not desirable. You know, if you mutilate a woman's vagina or her breast, she's not as desirable. So that's a punishment. Ugh. And these are the people that, you know, that you're trying to stamp out. So you wonder how they can become, you know, ISIS terrorists or whatever. You know, well, I mean, it's not that far off from Leviticus with the stoning and they have it's like a manual on how to torture somebody, you know, to punish somebody. I mean, the rules simple little things that we take for granted today that we might commit as an act back then was an act of total sin that was worthy of literally you having your eyes stabbed out your hands cut off being burned alive drawn and quartered you know any number of freaking really drastic punishments that <clears throat> today is just not even thought of I mean, there's even some states, it's interesting enough, there's even some states in this country that have brought back, you know, sodomy, you know, on the books as, as a punishable crime. You know, and that's an old one, okay? You know, sodomy has been illegal since almost the beginning. And that's just a simple, fairly convenient act. So, in the time of Leviticus, you could be stoned to death, beheaded. Have your dick cut off, your hands cut off, your eyes poked out. I mean, all because you suck somebody's dick or suck or somebody sucked your dick. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, good times. <laughs> He's still fucking giggling over there. <laughs> Those are good times. Yeah, they were great times for some. Yeah. I mean, look what they did to Jesus. He didn't actually commit any crimes. They just decided he was a problem. So, what do you do with problems? You nail them to a cross. You put a fucking, hey, you're a king? They mock him, so they make a fucking crown of thorns and stick it on his head. They jam nails through his fucking hands and feet and hang him from a cross and let him out in the fucking sun to fucking dry rot like a prune. God. Oh. <sighs> a lot so you can imagine what an example that sets for everyone else do you know what happened to Jesus what they fucking nailed him to a cross I think he's still alive want to go visit him <laughs> Do you want to go visit Jesus on the cross? Oh, it's like a festival in those days. They had, 
It's like, what are you doing today? Oh, <laughs> they're going to go fucking cut somebody's head off in the town square. Are you coming? Yeah, I got an appointment at 11. What time is it? Oh, it's at 12. Oh, I can make it. Well, you better get going because it's a long walk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I got new sandals. The sandal guy made me some new sandals, so I'm all right. <laughs> oh, nice. You're wearing the latest in sandal fashion, I see. <laughs> Who's your sandal guy? <laughs> yeah, these are, those are high-top sandals. Holy shit. Where'd you get those? those nice. No more snake bites. <laughs> Are those patented leather sandals you, you got those? there? I don't know. I think he called them boots. <laughs> what fucking stupid name is that? Oh, shit. What the fuck is that? I don't know, but they work. So, they're, you know, booties or something. <laughs> well, you got the booter, right? <laughs> oh, man, I'm fucking crying. Yeah. <laughs> are those patented leather sandals you got there? <laughs> yeah, those are nice. <laughs> Let me try them on. Honey, do you have the sandal stretcher? <laughs> Hold on, I'll go get her. It's Grandma. Grandma, Grandma oh, put these on. I need to have these stretched out. <laughs> hey? Yeah. Your arthritic feet and all those corns, they work really well. They stretch out all the sandals really good. You get them back, and you're like, what's this extra skin in here? <laughs> oh. You peel out the fucking skin, scrape. It's like when you when you bang your sandals together, it's not the dirt you're trying to get out. <laughs> it's fucked up. I'm gonna stand there at the cross, and everybody feels really bad. So what do they give them to drink? Right? What do you do? You know, guys thirsty. They're up on the cross. So what do you give them to drink? Well, he's high up. Okay, so they don't really have anything that you can't just toss them up a water bottle. Well, they so don't they, really have. They, so they water put a sponge, a sponge and they take a sponge and they fucking wrap some rope around it, stick it on the end of a stick, and they jam it up there and they go chew on that. Right? Chew Except for Jesus, sponge. they put fucking vinegar in it. Some asshole puts fucking vinegar in it. He goes, Yeah, chew on that. Suck that. Drink that. Drink that. Nice. <laughs> nice. I bet you that guy. Got a little extra place in hell. He's got a little extra few perks in hell. But that's done. <laughs> then you got all the, the looters. Okay. Then you got all the looters. They finally pulled Jesus down. <laughs> right. And you got all these people standing around going, Jesus Christ, this is this is bad stuff, man. This is they're gonna write about this. This this is like a big event. You know what? Keep those nails and, and cut a piece of that cross off, all right, and and give it to me. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to sell this. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to give it to my kids, and I can hold on to it as a keepsake. Oh. Someday, this is, these nails and this cross are going to be worth a lot of fucking money. What? Oh, sure, sure. People have been grave robbing since the beginning of time. <clears throat> That's why when, if they were amazed when they found, like, Tutankhamun with all the shit inside. Most of the graves throughout history have been looted. Even the most lavish graves, you know, that's why there's always these stories about graves being, you know, <clears throat> where they're haunted or, you know, some terrible fate will befall thee if you if you loot this grave and, you know, anything to try to keep grave robbers away. So people have, I mean, what is the, the chalice of the Last Supper, right? The Holy Grail, we think, right? They want the cup that Jesus, the last cup that Jesus drank out of at the Last Supper, Whoever holds that cup supposedly has all these fucking powers. So where's the cup? Well, we don't really know. The cup existed. If Jesus existed, and if the story is true, then somebody has that fucking cup. Nobody really knows where the cup is. Who took the fucking cup? I took the cup. I took the cup and I sold it to the highest bidder. That's pretty much how it works. Yeah, history's great.
parked up. Well, I think that's part of what the concept is, is that if you understand the history and you know it, you, those who know history are less likely to repeat it. So it's a good idea to try not to go back down that same road, but it doesn't matter. It seems to be what humans do, is they repeat. It's like eating a frankfurter, you know, you eat it once and then it comes back up like fucking 20 minutes later. Mm. It's just in our system to do it. So when's the last time you went to church? I think the last time I went to church was... Uh... I want to say Christmas. No, yeah. no, I, I didn't go to I didn't go to church on Christmas. I was that was for, I last time I went to church was last Easter. Wow. When was the last time you prayed? Uh, I don't even remember. Church. Yeah. Well, it's one of the beautiful things about praying is you could do it anywhere. Do it in any particular place. That's why they. That's why they killed Jesus, because that's basically what he was saying. You don't need all this nonsense. You know, I mean, the the Jewish people at the time were the were the primary religions were, of course, idolatry, idolism, and so all these different gods, right? But the Jews kind of have the concept of monotheism so they had this one god and of course they they wrapped it all up where you have the rabbis and they're very educated and they're politically influenced and they are they've got a deal worked out with rome and rome being the biggest power and rome trying to placate these powerful people now rome is more powerful than any jewish settlement or any jewish nation but needless to say the rabbis are very powerful, they're very intelligent, they're very well educated, and they know it, and they have money, and in part, Rome is part of that, and they're part of Rome. So, they had a lot of power, and their temples were lavish, and places of power, and it, and it, it and not only an example of Rome, but an example of what uh, Judaism, or the Jews and the powers that be in Judaism, have accomplished, and what they have. So, you, as a, as a poor dirt farmer, walk up with no fucking sandals to this beautiful marble palace as a temple and you think wow this has got to be something right you know where you come from it's just, just fucking stick trees and shit and and cow turds and you see this and you're like you're impressed you know so and you don't know how to read you don't know how to write and they tell you everything you need to know and god said and jesus comes rolling up on this like white on rice and says hey he got it all wrong you know, they're just taking your money because there was an entrance okay. fee. You had to pay to get into the temple to talk to God. It's not like now where you donate. No, you, there was, you had to pay. And at the same time, not only do you have to pay, but out front, it's like a whole business. Right? There's the money changes, there's people hawking wares and goods right on the holy land of the holy property of the church. It's a fucking business operation. So Jesus comes along and says, this is crap. This is not religion. This is business. Well, that didn't fly. This is a monopoly. Yeah. That didn't fly. You don't need all of this. This is, this is actually sacrilege. This is, this is basically you're defecating in the face of God. You might as well be doing that because... You don't need all of this. Well, it scares the shit out of everybody because people start to listen and follow and realize that this is wrong. Well, now he's a problem because he's trying to change everything. He's going to, we're going to lose our fucking jobs. We're going to lose our great jobs. We got, I got this great fucking job as a rabbi wow. and the assistant to the rabbi or whatever. I'm going to lose my fucking job because of this fucking guy, Jesus. Sounds familiar. Sounds kind of like what goes on today. Except then, 
you could have somebody fucking drawn and quartered and thrown her on a cross a lot easier than you can now. So if you think you got it bad, well, the point is, it doesn't matter whether Jesus was the Son of God or not. It doesn't matter whether he was the Messiah. What he was was somebody that understood that this was a corrupt world, and he was trying to tell people about it. And that is something that doesn't fly.